If you've got an SKR board or TFT and want to know how to connect the Wi-Fi module, this video guide is for you. Big Tree Tech's range of SKR mainboards, as well as their other accessories, such as the TFT35 touchscreen, have become quite popular because they're affordable, work well, and also have excellent online documentation. One accessory that doesn't have that same type of documentation is this Wi-Fi module, the ESP-01S. Enough so that I've had plenty of requests on how to do a setup video, which is what I present to you today. It might seem at the start that there's a lot of steps or it's complicated, but really if you follow along, you can get the whole thing done in around 15 to 20 minutes. At the end of the video, I'll show you what it can and can't do. And while it's definitely no replacement for Octoprint, it's worth checking out because it is so cheap. Let's begin. The modules we're looking at were sent to me by Big Tree Tech when they sent me the SKR version 1.4 turbo. As you can see for either the standard 1.4 or the turbo, if you pick the right option, you'll be sent the Wi-Fi module and the BTT rider. It's also possible to buy the Wi-Fi module separately. It's literally a couple of dollars. And you can also buy the Big Tree Tech rider separately too for $3.65. This rider module is basically a communication tool and you could substitute other similar devices. But for this guide, I'll be using this BTT rider just to make things a little more straightforward. The Wi-Fi chip is an ESP8266 and I'll link this Wikipedia article below so you can learn more about its history. It's been around since 2014 and since then it's been adopted by many for use with Arduino projects. It's since been superseded by the ESP32. This is a much more powerful module. It offers standalone operation, but since we already have a 3D printer and mainboard, the ESP8266 is still good for our needs. There's going to be a few steps in this guide, but most of them are quite short and straightforward. We're gonna start by looking at device compatibility as well as where to find resources. Here's our Big Tree Tech ESP-01S Wi-Fi module. The pinouts are marked on the back. It uses a two x four header, but from this orientation, only the top and bottom rows will be utilized when we connect to the printer. Some Big Tree Tech boards, such as the SKR Pro, have a built-in Wi-Fi port for this module with the matching 2x4 header. Connection is straightforward. We inspect the pins on the back of each module and then match them up, plugging it in like so. The recent SKR version 1.4 also has a Wi-Fi port that was one of the changes over the 1.3. It plugs in so it sticks out from the edge of the board. If it were the other way around, it would block the TFT plug. Another way to add the Wi-Fi module is if you're using a TFT35 from Big Tree Tech. It also has the correct port on the back and the module is plugged in so once again it sticks out like the SD card. This would allow you to add Wi-Fi to something like an SKR Mini E3. Since we only need power, ground, RX and TX, you could potentially use something like an MKS Gen L, but just be mindful that the Wi-Fi module takes 3.3 volt logic instead of 5 volts. Connecting 5 volts instead would probably destroy it pretty quickly. If you're really, really adventurous, you could also solder the connections directly to something like an Ender 3 standard board. This would involve scratching off the mask on the back of the board, soldering on the RX and TX, and then finding 3.3 and ground connections elsewhere. Definitely not for the faint hearted. Usually Big Tree Tech does an excellent job of making all of their firmware and hardware open source. But in this case, for the Wi-Fi module, there's nothing on their GitHub. There is a repo for the writer, however, and within that and other repos, we can find what we need. Inside the manual PDF is where we find our instructions for flashing the base firmware. And during this stage, we need to use this special tool. Unfortunately, the link to it is actually a screenshot, so you can't copy and paste. But I'll provide a direct link in the description, so all you have to do is click download. And the basic guide PDF has further instructions for setting up the Wi-Fi module and web interface. Big Tree Tech actually keeps this firmware inside the SKR Pro repo. To find it, we come into firmware, ESP-01S, and then we have the four files that we need for their tutorial. Both the firmware and web interface are actually by Luke GitHub. They're the real hero of this whole thing, and you can find a lot more documentation as well as wikis in both the ESP3D and ESP3D web UI repos, 
and I've linked these both below in the description. Before continuing with this guide, please visit the description and prepare these six resources. For all but one, it's just a matter of clicking a link. Apart from the firmware 4 files, one choice is to head back to the main page of the repo and download the entire zip file. Alternatively, you can click on each one and then click the download button. The 404 page is actually a little bit trickier than this, but it's actually not essential and if you need to, you can just do these three here. On to step two, which is to connect the BTT writer to the ESP module and flash the base firmware. The BTT writer user manual has all of the information we need for this first step. The first thing to note is the logic voltage selection jumper. We can see down the bottom is labeled five volts and three pins up is three V3 or 3.3 volts. If your jumper is on the bottom two pins for five volts, just pull it off and plug it in one pin up to select 3.3 volts to suit this Wi-Fi module. With this selected, it's now a matter of plugging in everything as per this diagram here. This can seem a little bit confusing at first. Basically, the BTT writer end is shown here and the label for the ESP module is what's written in red around the outside. The female to female DuPont cables are included with the BTT writer. We now connect one end of the cables to the six pins shown in the diagram I started with black for ground and red for 3.3 volts. The rest of the colors don't really matter, just plug them into the matching pins. And if you need to, you can pull the wires apart to take away the strain. Now at the other end on the Wi-Fi module, we match up the colors. Again, I started with 3.3 volts and ground. After this, I connected the TX from one to the RX from the other and vice versa. Finally, reset goes to reset and the pin labeled DTR on the BTT writer goes to IO0 on the Wi-Fi module. It's just a matter of looking at the wire colors and matching up the pins one by one until your connections are complete. You're now ready to connect the BTT writer to your PC via a USB connection. Next up, we're gonna take the firmware flashing tool that we downloaded and open it. We'll be presented with a choice and we want the top button ESP8266. Everything is covered step-by-step step in the manual and the first thing we need to do is to select our binary file that we downloaded from the GitHub. With that listed up the top, we can come down to this lower half and match up the settings. 26M for crystal frequency, 40 MHz for SPI speed, D out for SPI mode, 8 megabit flash size, and finally, select your COM port from the drop-down menu. Once you've double-checked all of this, we can now click Start. That's it, it only takes one or two seconds and our base firmware is flashed. We can close this program, unplug our cables to the Wi-Fi module and disconnect the Big Tree Tech writer, which we're now finished with. Our Wi-Fi module has its base firmware, so step three is to connect to it directly so we can then complete this process. We need to plug in the Wi-Fi module to either the main board or the TFT screen. At this stage, it doesn't really matter. You can see mine is plugged into the back of the TFT screen, so when I power on the printer, the Wi-Fi module will be powered on too. From this point, we're now going off the second PDF, the ESP-01S basic guide. The Wi-Fi module is not yet on our home network, but it is broadcasting its own Wi-Fi point called ESP3D. From another device in our network, we simply connect to it with the password 12345678. After we've done this, we open up our browser and enter the IP address 192.168.0.1. This will open this configuration page where we can upload the web UI section of the firmware. That means we're done with step three and we're on to step four. Come up to choose files, select the file you downloaded called index.html.gz and then click the upload button. At this stage, you can optionally upload the favicon.ico as well as 404.html. Once this is done, we can refresh the page. More good news, when we click the refresh button, it moves us on to step five. That should open up a wizard where we can complete our setup. We're gonna to go to start setup. In our case, our firmware will stay as Marlin. The board rate will be set in your firmware, most commonly 11,500 or 250,000. And finally, the ESP name, this is not actually that important, it's just what displays in the browser. The next screen is perhaps the most important of our setup, and that's where we tell the module rather than broadcast its own network, we want it to connect to our own local network. To do that, we need to make sure client station is selected. 
After this, we can click the magnifying glass and pick our home network. Finally, we can type in the password for our network and click set. With all of these done, we'll now click continue. We've finished the wizard, so we can click close and then power cycle the printer to restart the Wi-Fi module. The only advantage of connecting it to a TFT instead of directly to the main board is that after it connects, it will tell you its IP address so you can load the proper web interface. If you're not using a TFT 35 in touchscreen mode, log into your router and find the IP address there instead. Our printer is now connected to our local area network, so we're up to the final step, so let's see what it can do. Once we load up the IP address it's connected to, we should have our main interface. By default, there's no confirmation that it's actually connected to the printer. To verify this, we can scroll down to the terminal and enter something like M115. That command will give you information about the firmware. And since the printer has responded, we know that we're connected. Alternatively, you could hit refresh for the SD files and that will list everything on the main board's internal SD card. Now you'll notice here we do have some controls for movement and homing, as well as for the heater, but some things are missing such as a heated bed and part cooling fan. To get those, we click on the menu in the corner and then go to preferences. Now here's where we can get some additional options. For instance, if you have a camera connected via an IP address, you can put that here. You can change the feed rate for your manual movement speeds. If you've got more than one extruder, there's two options there. We do have a heated bed and a part cooling fan, so I'm going to tick both of those. Once we're done and we click save, the interface will update and all of a sudden we have our missing controls. Heating up the extruder and bed is about as simple as you would hope. If we tick auto check, it'll produce some graphs which will update in real time and also down in the terminal, we'll have the temperatures as well. But if we don't wanna see this constantly, we can untick verbose mode. Other things to explore are the printer tab and when we hit this button here, it will reload with a lot of values and we can input them and click the set button and that saves us from having to memorize all of these G-code commands. If we come back up and click the third tab, there's a bunch of other settings here as well. The second button gets us back to the upload screen for the web interface and other files. And the third button will allow us to upload a new firmware package. The red button, as you might expect by the icon, will allow you to restart the Wi-Fi module. One handy thing that we can have are macros, and that lets us add a single button for sequences of G-code that we use regularly. The first thing we need to do to set them up is to create a text file with the G-code listed, just like we would send it to the printer. Here I've got one for ABL, and I'm optionally gonna have an M117 with the message leveling bed to come on the LCD, followed by my G29 for auto bed leveling. I now have to upload this file by coming to the green icon, picking my file and then clicking upload. I can now close this, come back to the dashboard and click on the macro button. We're gonna click new, I'm gonna call it ABL. The icon can be whatever you like. The color can be whatever you like. And then finally we update our file name to match exactly what we uploaded. When we're done, we click save, we'll have the new button and clicking it should work as we intend. Note that you can see my optional leveling bed message on the LCD. I mentioned earlier this is no substitute for Octoprint, so let's finish by looking at some limitations. You might notice the first time you try to upload that you receive an error. It seems fairly cryptic, please use 8.3 file name only. Luke has a pinned issue on his GitHub explaining this is a Marlin limitation and not that of the Wi-Fi module. To get around it, we need to rename the file, shortening the five letter extension to just three. And I assume if the first part of the name is longer than eight characters, that will need to be shortened as well. If we come back to upload, we'll see that our file can go through successfully. The page did seem to hang, but after I refresh it, we can see my file is there. There was also confirmation on the TFT touchscreen. That was a tiny file and you'll notice all of the big ones here were manually put onto the SD card from my computer. And that's because once again, there is a massive speed limit when uploading via Wi-Fi this way. Luke's GitHub suggests that a much better method is to get a Wi-Fi SD card, upload separately to it, and then you can start the print from the ESP interface. Clicking to start prints works exactly like you would expect, but there is a limitation here. We can only start prints from the SD card inside the main board, not from the SD card or USB flash drive connected directly to the TFT. 
Support for printing from these devices is something flagged on the GitHub as a future feature, so hopefully we might get to see it at some stage. Finally, the TFT35 has Marlin LCD and touchscreen modes, but I found commands from the Wi-Fi module were only received if I left it in touchscreen mode. That means that when you start a print from the Wi-Fi, you'll see the temperature output on the LCD, but you won't see any print progress. This setup has some useful functionality, but it's definitely nowhere near as powerful as Octoprint, so you won't be replacing it with this anytime soon. The thing for me is that it's so cheap. That's why I've still ordered a couple more Wi-Fi modules to go onto my printers that already have this touchscreen fitted. For a couple of dollars, it's probably going to come in handy someday. Have you got any thoughts on this Wi-Fi module and what it really needs to match Octoprint? Please leave them down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.